I can hear you call my name. I can hear you call my name. I can hear you call my name. Come to the table, cup runneth over. Come drink your fill. Hello and welcome to Battleborn Believers. My name is Christy. Tonight I'm going to share a dream I had about the end times that the Lord shared with me. I have spent the last week spending time with the Lord in fellowship with my Christian brothers and sisters, as well as praying about what I should share this week. I have started at least five or more videos and then just stopped. For some reason, there was something holding me back. I wasn't able to focus on the topics at hand. It is like the Holy Spirit was trying to speak to me. I've been praying about it. Then just moments ago, the Lord brought it to my attention. I believe he wants me to share this dream. Even though on the surface, the dream is quite disturbing and graphic in nature. So if you have a sensitive disposition when it comes to violence or death, you will need to stop watching this video now. This dream happened some years back, and at first it really terrified me. I couldn't get it out of my mind, but the Lord was trying to show me something. I actually forgot about this dream for the last year until tonight when I was reflecting on the world events that are happening now while speaking to the Lord. It was like a light bulb being turned on. This dream is part of a series of dreams I have had that go together. They give us a glimpse of what the United States is about to face. I've noticed a lot of other believers, brothers and sisters, having very similar dreams. But there's always hope in it, especially for those who are in Christ. You know, I don't share this to scare you, but rather to warn you, as well as prepare you. In the dream, the world was in chaos, and the United States was in a state of war and unrest with natural disasters. The war had finally reached its wicked hand across the oceans and landed on our shores. Yes, the war was on U.S. soil. There were terrorists wreaking havoc and bands of criminals going wild with no repercussions because there wasn't anyone to stop them. The police, like everyone else, were just trying to protect their families and flee the unsafe territories. Meanwhile, the U.S. territory was trying to fight back on the West Coast. My son and I were doing the same thing. I was traveling from the west and was coming from Washington State going east towards North Dakota with my son. I had been traveling all day since the early morning and it was nearly 1 a.m. I remember being in fear for our lives and I just wanted to keep going. But I have been driving through Montana for hours now and it seemed to be peaceful with no military activity. I barely saw a soul on I-94 as I was driving through the towns and cities. Along the way, we were listening to the radio, and they were telling us that it was safer to move north and towards the east into North Dakota or Minnesota. And I had been driving for so long, I was just simply exhausted. We were about an hour or so from North Dakota state line. I was coming to an exit when I saw a sign for a hotel. I can't remember the name of the hotel, but it looked like a La Quinta or a Comfort Inn. It had three stories and the doors were on the inside, not on the outside of the building. The parking lot, as I pulled up, had only six or seven cars on the east side of the building. The lights were on and it looked as if they were open to my surprise. So I pulled into the parking spot right in front of the office where the brightest street light was shining right on my car. My son was sleeping in the car and I wanted a clear view of him while I checked in. I went into the lobby and asked the man working at the front desk if they had any rooms available. He said yes and then I asked how much. He told me 89 for the night. I asked for a room and I handed him my payment in cash. I felt a sense of relief come over me and for a brief moment I felt like I may be able to relax for the night. He hands me a key and tells me that my room is room 20, which is on the second floor and on the south side of the building. It is now just after 1 a.m. I went to the car and woke up my son. I grabbed only one of my bags to shower and clean up, then asked David to grab the food bag and a few bottles of water so we could eat and drink something before we went to bed when we got up to the room. We go up to the room, close the door, put the second latch on, 
for security and get settled in. I looked out the window and there was nothing but darkness as far as the eyes could see. It seemed peaceful, peaceful and quiet. So I went over to the bed and gave my son a sandwich to eat and he ate it quickly and then fell right back to sleep next to me on the bed. I took a shower and began to get comfortable on the bed next to my son. And right when I was about to fall asleep, I hear a shot ring out from a distance. It was a gun. The sound was muffled, but I recognized it. And I think it was coming from the front desk that was just below me. Then I hear the feet of several people running up the stairs and then down to the other end of the hall. And I hear a man yell out, stop, and then another shot. Then I hear these men's muffled voices. There was one man that seemed like he was the leader and he had a deep voice and called out to the other men with him. He said something I couldn't make out and then you could hear them kick in the door of the hotel room at the other end of the hall. Then two more shots rang out. Then I hear them moving to the next room. Then I hear a commotion like someone was fighting and I hear another shot. I realize that they are going from room to room, quickly getting closer and closer to my room. I'm just paralyzed in that moment with fear. I look down at my son and contemplate whether I should wake him or let him just barge in and kill us quickly. The thought was maybe he won't have to endure the fear and it will be quick. Then I hear them smash through another door two or three rooms down and the sound of a young woman crying out. Then another shot rings. Now that they are closer, I can hear the voices of the men more clearly. I start to panic inside. I cry out to the Lord in my head, please spare my son and me. Please protect us. Then all of a sudden it hits me. I may have time to run to the window and quickly open it, slip my son out the window and then jump out myself. If I was to wake him, I would tell him we are in danger and I have no time to explain and he needs to be quiet when he hits the ground, even if it hurts. Just as I had that thought, I hear the men crash through the room right next to mine and the woman screaming and pleading with the man, and then a shot silencing her, and then I wake up. This dream stuck with me for a long time. I questioned if I was prepared spiritually for death and for what is coming before the Lord's return. Well, over the last few years, there have been many signs. The birth pains are now here. Are you prepared for what that means? Birth pains don't get easier. They come closer and closer together while they get more and more intense. Have you built up your faith to withstand the tribulation to come? The United States has had it pretty easy compared to, the, to a great number of other countries over the years as the wars have been building up to the state of trouble and unrest we are coming into now. Anyone with eyes to see can see that we are at the starting point of World War III and it is clear that the prophecies are beginning to unfold. We must prepare ourselves. We are facing an unprecedented time like never before and never will be again. Now I would like to share a vision my son had. One night my son was dreaming and he told me that all of a sudden he became aware and was in the in-between state between awake and asleep. He had an auditory experience. What he heard was a woman newscaster, and she was talking about a massive earthquake that had just hit New York City. He got the impression from what the woman was reporting that the city of New York had suffered a greatly devastating amount of destruction and loss of life. The Lord warns us about the end times and what it will look like just before his return. In Matthew 24, 6 through 13, it states, You will hear of wars and rumors of wars, but see to it that you are not alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still not to come. Nations will rise against nations and kingdoms against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of birth pains. Then you will be handed over to be persecuted and put to death and you will be hated by all nations because of me. At that time, many will turn away from the faith and will betray and hate each other. And many false prophets will appear and deceive many people. Because of the increase of wickedness, the love of most will grow cold, but the one who stands firm to the end will be saved. These are the times we are in, brothers and sisters. In Matthew 24, 37 through 39, it states that in the end times, it will be like the days of Noah. But what does that mean? And what were the days of Noah like? 
For as were the days of Noah, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. For as in those days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and given in marriage, until the day when Noah entered the ark. And they were unaware until the flood came and swept them all away. So will be the coming of the Son of Man. The sudden onset of the events that will lead up to the Lord's return will be dramatic. Although the signs will be clear, they'll still be surprising to most people in the world. Jesus compares the situation to days of Noah. Life on earth will be just as wicked as the days of Noah. Perhaps it will be even worse. But the main idea in the passage is that everything will be in the full swing of normal life without anyone suspecting that the time of God's judgment is about to fall. And once it starts, it isn't going to stop, just like with the birth pains. We need to build up our faith and store up our treasures in heaven. As it states in Matthew 6, 19 through 21, Do not lay up yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourself treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. We need to be willing to lay down our life for the Lord, pick up our cross, and follow him daily. Build up our faith, for when the day comes that our faith and our resolve is tested, we will win the race. In John 14, 27, it says, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. Do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. And in Isaiah 41, 10, it states, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. We can gain strength in the Lord and let the Holy Spirit guide us. In Deuteronomy 31, 6, it states, Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them. For the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. And in Revelations 2:10. This is the promise given to us by our Savior. Be faithful unto death, and I will give you the crown of life. And just know this, no one has ever been more faithful in keeping a promise than our Lord and Savior, the King of kings, the Lord of lords. I repeat that he will never leave you nor forsake you. So when Satan is rearing his ugly head, and it seems like all hope is gone while we are witnessing the prophecies unfolding before us, look up for your redemption is drawing near. If you're finding yourself fearful, remember that the Lord did not give us a spirit of fear. 2 Timothy 1, 7 For we were not given a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. You see how this passage refers to fear as a spirit? It is a spirit of fear sent to torment you. Ever since the planned event on a worldwide scale at the end of 2019, the spirit of fear have been running rampant and continue to wreak havoc across the globe while the book of Revelations begins to unfold before us. In Ephesians 6.12, it states, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. There are things that are going to happen in this world, and they are going to make men's hearts fail them for what is coming upon this earth. We will face war, famine, natural disaster, and unrest, but that is just the symptoms of what's really been happening behind the scenes. Soon there will be visible war against mankind from the fallen angels and their children and the army they have created. There is a force behind all of this, and it is Satan and his seed. Satan is ruling this world from behind the scenes, and by the time the majority of people realize this, it will be way too late. This is why we must build our faith in the Lord and create a strong relationship with him. We need to be able to discern between the voice of the enemy and the Lord's voice, but you can only do this by building a relationship with him. It takes two. The Lord pursues you. Now pursue the Lord and see what happens. In Hosea 4, 6, it states that my people are destroyed from a lack of knowledge. You see, the Lord has given us all the tools we need right there in his word. 
Ask the Lord for wisdom so you can understand what is happening around you and lead others to truth. For there is so much deception everywhere you look and everywhere you go. Without the Holy Spirit leading us, we are lost. Ask the Lord to increase your discernment so you can discern the difference from the Lord's voice and from the enemy's voice. Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways submit to him and he will make your paths straight. Seek the Lord with all your heart and truly get to know him and the true character of the Lord through his word. But if you wait until all hell breaks loose, it might be too late for we are not promised tomorrow. I hope this message has blessed you. Thank you for watching. And if you have not done so, please like and subscribe. If you feel led to do so, please donate so I can keep this channel going. The links are in the description below. And God bless you. I can hear you call my name I can hear you call my name I can hear you call my name Come to the table Cup runneth over Come drink your fill